friends, how are you? Are you all very well? Yeah! yeah! Nice one, and what a it's lo lovely people sat down the front there, and then you lot all sat there, and you've brought along, you booked a seat specifically for some crazy mascot that you've brought along. Ch chuck it up, go on. And look at that. Not only did he have a mascot, he went uh, and he pointed at the fact he was wearing a t shirt, one of my t shirts. Throw it up, let's have a look at your mascot. <laughs> Look, there was an audible gasp from you people there. <gasps> now, no one's ever brought a mascot to a show before. It's breaking all the rules. <laughs> the... Wow, look at that. You're not fucking about tonight, mate, are you? <laughs> That's what I like to see, and you lot looking slightly sad. We didn't bring anything at all. <laughs> The, uh, there's quite a big man down the front with a massive beard there, and for a minute the fella next to him sort of looked as if to go, could I pass him off as a mascot? <laughs> it was a... there was a... is a what? That's, my dad. That's your dad. He can still be a mascot. <laughs> He's clearly not your dad. Look at the difference between the two of you. <laughs> oh, sorry, I did not... Shut up! your bloody faces, as if I've had DNA run on all of you. <laughs> no, that's what I do. Before the show, I sit up there hanging in a big space unit like that, and I look down and I have you all tested on the sly like that. The ushers, as they come in, as they're ripping your ticket, they cheekily swab you like that. <laughs> and then I go, have a look down there. There's a very thin lad like that, very clean shaven, and then there's a big burly man next to her with a massive big beard. <laughs> The two of them are together. They're clearly of no relation. <laughs> the, um, it's quite... Uh, it's what? You used to be skinny. Don't say it like that. I used to be skinny. <laughs> I used to be skinny, but not anymore. It doesn't matter. You look fantastic. You've made up for it with a big old beard. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You don't, what you, you don't hark back for the days when you look like him. Look at him. He looks like a slight gust of wind, and he would just... Uh, and he would blow away. If, the, if somebody were to open the doors now, he would, have, he would have been blown onto that mascot. I'm not quite sure what it is, to be honest with you. It's some sort... Is it a timber wolf of some description? Is it some kind of local... It, I haven't been a fool, have I? And that's a local Canberra wolf. <laughs> Is there a special type of wolf that lives around the hills here that comes down and feasts on men with beards? I don't know. <laughs> the, um... Oh, sorry, there's some latecomers coming in. You come there. Welcome along. <laughs> Look, they're now going to try and work out why I seem to have a little dog next to me <laughs> on the stage. I've become the world's shittest ventriloquist. <laughs> yeah. It's a... <laughs> It's a new thing that I'm, I'm working on, you know. I can't actually do the voice of the wolf, but uh, I just simply stand here and uh, occasionally I'll go, what? And pretend that the wolf's whispering to me. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to turn him to face me like that. <laughs> the, uh, imagine if I just waited till those latecomers came in and just stood really still like this, just going, look, I don't mean to scare you, but there's a live wolf on stage. <laughs> And I like to do the show, but unfortunately, I might be ripped apart limb from limb. <laughs> good, good job we've got Grizzly Adams down the front, though, isn't it? There he is. <laughs> you just leap onto the stage like that, pulling out some sort of chopper out of your hat. Shut up. The uh, it's, uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, more of a flop. Oh, I say, oh, sorry, I thought when I said, pull out your chopper, and you went more of a... I thought, oh... I, th I thought, no, I meant a bloody axe. I didn't mean your... You know, I didn't mean your gentleman's area. The, uh, pull out my chopper, mate. No, it'll be more of a flop. Oh, yes. That's right. <laughs> I might be a burly man. I've got a big burly cock as well. Look at that. I shall leap onto the stage and allow it to flop out like that. <laughs> oh, yes, you turn to your son and go, you've got all this to look forward to. <laughs> oh, yes. I remember when I was a skinny young lad like you, it was more of a reveal, but now... <laughs> thump! It's a flop. What an amazing way to kill a wolf that would be. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> There's a hell of a show right there before you've even 
before you've even got to the stuff that I've got to say for myself. <laughs> Just all of a sudden, a live wolf is released onto the stage, and as I'm there, what the hell's gonna happen? And then, ta da! Ha ha ha! Oh, blimey, you'll be the toast of the land there. Uh, the... <laughs> anyway, so what is it? What is the wolf? What's the...? I don't know, he was there when I got here. He was there when you got here? You lying bastard. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a good job he didn't say the same thing, isn't it? As a big bearded man. I don't know. He was just here when I got there. <laughs> you know, he just follows me everywhere I go. He's like some kind of uh, future stalker. I arrive and he's already there. <laughs> messed with my head, that has. The, um, the, uh, I'm gonna give him back in a minute, cos I'm not gonna lie to you, he's freaking me out. <laughs> just having a small stuffed dog next to me. The, uh, do you like the way that he's just eyeballing you now? <laughs> like that. You're actually looking quite nervous in the front row like that. Get that T-shirt wearing wolf away from me. <laughs> Are you worried that he's gonna get closer and closer? It's like, oh, that's sorry, I've just realised that that you flopping your bits out like that, like some sort of pornographic little red riding hood, isn't it? <laughs> the, um, my grandma, that's a big sausage you're eating. <laughs> the, what? Shut your faces! <laughs> just go, oh, oh, no. <laughs> No, we can't stand for that kind of nonsense. It's bang out of order. The... Um, no, the, uh, that'd be terrible, wouldn't it, if he got slowly got closer and closer to you throughout the course of the show until he was right on top of you. You wouldn't be scared by the wolf. It was just him, just misdirected. Oh. oh, no, I've been whacked in the face. Why do I keep saying this? Sorry, I do apologise. My bits are in a shocking state at the moment. The, no, what it is, I'm riding around uh, on my motorbike, right? Sorry, I should move him out the way, shouldn't I? <laughs> He'll go, no, leave him there. <laughs> no, I'm riding around on my motorbike between all the gigs and I've got all my motorcycle uh, leathers, not leathers, the sort of like, uh, you know, the... <laughs> no, we don't, Ross. What, what the hell is this? Are you, are you in some sort of gimp costume? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm on a motorcycle, and then there's another bloke on a bike behind me, and just holding me on a leash like that. As I... <laughs> I find it's cheaper than having a GPS. You simply uh, you go, which way do I need to turn? And he gives a talk. And I, oh, this way. The, uh, the, uh, no, but it's, and but because uh, I'm from England and I'm not used to the heat and the humidity and it's a bit odd. It's like it doesn't matter where I sweat from; it all seems to end up down here. <laughs> it's, do you know what I mean? It's like I've got secret hidden guttering behind all the, the you know. It just runs and subsequently it means down here it's all a little bit. Um, how should I put it? Um, well, basically, if I was to take my trousers off, it, it would look like a lava lamp down there. It's just... <laughs> no, seriously, it's just testicles floating around <laughs> in a sort of a... Seriously, if I was to put a torch behind them like that, <laughs> it would... It would be like the start of a Bond film. It would just... <laughs> <laughs> The, <laughs> thank God you clapped that there. You go, yes, we like that image. <laughs> Could quite easily have been, oh, God, no, I make it stop. But the most dangerous thing that I've found about... No, where did you get... I'll get back to that in a minute. The, uh, can you remember the most dangerous thing? The, uh, are you sure? You just looked at me as if to say, no, Ross, I can't do that. I need to be ever vigilant against wild animals. <laughs> Wearing T-shirts. <laughs> The, uh, kind of, what was your name, my grizzly friend? You're not telling me. You're not telling me your name? Why not? <laughs> Did you hear that? Somebody up there went, ah. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, he's not going to tell him his name. The whole show is knackered. <laughs> no, no. That's, that's never happened to me in this country before, to be honest with you. I've always asked people their names and they go, it's such... What was that? One person up there just went... <laughs> like that. As if to go, it's never happened before. Good on us, Aussies. <laughs> but, as, 
a single clap like that. This is some sort of free lads flamenco dancer up there. Going, you know what? I've always wanted to do the flamenco dancing. <laughs> yes. Actually, no, I've changed my mind. I don't think I will. Oh, possibly I will. The, what would be good is if this theatre was fitted with one of those, you know, those light clapper things that they have. <laughs> And that was just somebody going, it's a bit dark out here, and apparently the place is infested with wolves. I need to turn the lights on. <laughs> oh, it doesn't seem to be working. The, uh, that'd be a nightmare, wouldn't it, if you're a flamenco dancer and you were working in a bar that had one of those clapper things on. Because you'd be trying to do a bit of a show and it'd be like, ladies and gentlemen, please, will you look at my flamenco? And the lights would be going on and off, but uh, you go bloody hell. <laughs> Especially if you're an epileptic. Imagine that. But a bloody nightmare, that, wouldn't it? You'd be trying it and you'd be like that, and then the things, and then you'd start having a fit. You'd be, you'd be like that. And, and that would make you clap more, you know, and you'd, you'd be trapped in a flamenco. So, and you'd go, stop, I forgot the lights would be flashing. I'm going to I can't stop flamenco. And then finally, like, you'd do it all, and you'd be fine, and you'd stop. And then the audience would go, that was brilliant. And they'd stop that. <laughs> and the lights would go, oh, God. <laughs> it's just constant. A constant flamenco loop over and over again. And you'd be off, and there we are. And, uh, yeah, oh, it'd be shocking. The, um, so, uh, oh, I've knackered myself out now with the, with the flamenco. They do not, they do not pulse on the flamencoists. They, they, no, they do that. They, they don't just do that. That's like somebody moshing who's had some kind of spine problem. <laughs> Come on, put more effort into it. I can't. <laughs> I've had a metal rod put in my spine. I can only judder. The, uh, is that a thing they do? Is that a medical thing, having a metal rod put in your spine? Probably not. The, um, yeah, if I had one in, I'd have it put in and then I'd have a bit come out the top, like that, so that I could uh, just jump on at dodgems. And just... <laughs> Actually, no, that'd be bad, wouldn't it? Because it'd send an electrical thing right down your spine and into your arse, like that. And if there's one thing I find spoils my evening, it's having my arse electrocuted. <laughs> ah, ah, the, uh, it'd be quite good, though. You could, uh, you could uh, sell a tape, a, a light bulb to the top of it, and then pretend you were constantly having brilliant ideas. <laughs> mm. Mm. The, uh, <laughs> I think that would be a foolish idea. Yeah, yeah, well, nobody asks you, Wolf, and one more word out of you, and you're gonna get Grizzly Adams bollocks in your face. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> this is really bad, isn't it? The fact that I've just left him on the stage for so long, I feel like one of those blokes that works on one of those fairground rides. <laughs> come on now, come on now. Throw some balls, get it in the back there, and you'll win one of these shitty little wolves. <laughs> The, uh, no, so where did you get the, uh, the You what? At a, At a carnival. Oh, good work. It was an actual carnival win. Blimey. I, I can tell, actually, from the fact that it's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, you took the words right out of my mouth there. The, uh, <laughs> is that what Meatloaf was singing about? When he said, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was thinking about the shitty quality of the wolf. <laughs> you won the wolf out of the ground. And it's clearly gonna burst into flames when you give it to a child. <laughs> oh! <laughs> do -do 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 You must in her can't. I've had a metal spine put in me. I've had a metal spine put in me rod. Yes, I've had a metal spine put in me iron rod. Yes. Is that a new iron rod you've got there, Ross? Yes, it is. Do you like the way I've had a spine put in it? <laughs> yeah, what's that? Shut your face. The, yeah, before I get grizzly to do the 
do that. No, it is shit, isn't it? It's, it's what I, I mean, this is quite clearly filled with uh, flammable synthetics. That would just, a child would be playing with that and it would. And, and then just slowly melt. And possibly melt onto the child. So that when you took your kid down to the accident and emergency department, they would have a wolf melted onto them. Like some kind of strange woodland Siamese twins. <laughs> oh, did you see those Siamese twins that were joined at the face? No, thanks for that. That was good. <laughs> Broke down there, just went, no. <laughs> and I don't want to hear about them now. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's one thing hearing about Grizzly Adams whacking his big burly cock in the face of a woodland creature. But, uh, oh yeah, you'd have trouble, wouldn't you, if it was the Siamese twins joined at the face? Where would you whack? <laughs> I thought... What? <laughs> None of the things I talk about tonight are necessarily gonna come true. <laughs> Just relax, it's all in the mind. It's fine, it's, it's terrible. It had some, it, he had a meeting and he told us all to go out and annoy Siamese twins. <laughs> we don't even know where to find Siamese twins. <laughs> no, I'll tell you where, Siam. <laughs> you can't get moved for them over there. It's a bloody nightmare walking around like this. <laughs> Excuse me, can I get through? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Stop it right now. Sorry. Sure. Which, which fair did you get this slightly shitty item from? Was it a local? Because there's a big one coming up, isn't there? There's a... Is it on Sunday? You, you, well, how old are you now? You're like 18 or something, aren't you? <laughs> Canberra, what is it? Seven years old or something? It was formed in the 80s, I believe. Is that right? <laughs> was it, is it true? Ca uh, Canberra was started by Kajagoogoo. <laughs> About the four of you. Who the hell are Kaj no, where was the? <coughs> it was what? A uh, camera show. And what? Uh, what did you have to do to win such a highly flammable item? <laughs> the hammer thing. That could have been anything, couldn't it? <laughs> that could have been you attacking a backpacker. <laughs> you know? No. It's a popular Aussie tradition. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, shut your faces! Oh no. You can't say that. You can't accuse us of all killing backpackers. That's probably what it was. There was probably a line of backpackers all there and some fella and he had like a, a hammer and he said, right then, if you can kill more than 10 in an hour, the, um, <laughs> you know, maybe <laughs> the uh, <laughs> malat mallet it's called. It's a big thing. Uh, <laughs> Slightly worried that you're all abroad in there. <laughs> oh, yes, it's my last mallet. It's our favourite fairground ride. <laughs> it's brilliant. First, you must entice the backpackers into the car <laughs> and then pull the mallet out, whack them around the head, and then you're presented with a wolf in clothes. <laughs> ah, old top Aussie traditions. <laughs> the, uh, oh, what? The, oh, it's the strength. Oh, the f and you and uh, you, you were good, you could have, that, that's right up your street there. Show up the young lad there, he's all skinny and lithe now, but oh yeah, you've got that extra power. <laughs> hey, you could have won one of them and tormented them with it. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, you could have just dropped your cock on it, couldn't you? <laughs> Look at that, there you go. <laughs> I'll have two. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the, I'm so sorry. This was obviously meant to be some kind of lovely father and son night out. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's ended up with you being some kind of local camera playboy. <laughs> the, um, brilliant, and you, and you, and bump. and so when was the show then? Uh, it was last year. It was last year, and you've kept that thing. I'm surprised it hasn't just slowly fallen to pieces. <laughs> over the course of the show, oh, and you've brought it along here tonight, and did you book that extra seat, or did somebody not make it? No, someone not made it. Then. Somebody didn't make it. I'm guessing they're an English person that hitchhiked here. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. I thought so. <laughs> oh, shut your faces! <laughs> the, um, and so, no, go on, what? Oh, he's, he's the, the only friend that we've got. 
he's the only other person that wanted a ticket. Hmm, <laughs> that makes me feel so special. You're bringing people up going, Ross is on in town tonight, you want to come? I can't, I've got to go out killing. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to take the highly flammable wolf then. <laughs> what can I do? My hands are tied. It's funny you should say that, because that's exactly what I'm doing now. With a... <laughs> the, um, I'll give you him back, because he can't stay on stage all night, surely. Has he got a name? For what? Brandy Pants. <laughs> Randy P Pan. Randy Pan. <laughs> Is that some kind of ancient Aboriginal word for shitty item? <laughs> what? Ra Randy Pan? Where, where did that come from? What? Ask his parents. Ask his parents. <laughs> you're, you're really starting to worry me now. <laughs> Because even your girlfriend went, OK. <laughs> I thought he was bringing it along as a bit of a mascot situation. I didn't realise that it's actually one of his close friends. <laughs> the uh, Randy Pan. And it was his parents that gave him the name. And were they two slightly larger, highly flammable items? <laughs> ready to destroy a child? What? Yeah, a bit like this. A bit like this. What, you suggesting that my massive silver balls are in some way less than, uh, highly safe? <laughs> are you just, are you, you're, you just sat there just going, I like the set he's provided for us to look at, but I think we might all die. <laughs> yeah, you should see the finale of the show, it's brilliant. I dance around the stage just with some lighter fluid. Just, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> and then I tap dance in flint shoes. <laughs> Cover your beard, for God's sake. <laughs> That's the last thing we want. You running around with a big beard of flames. Ah! Actually, no, that'd add to the spectacle, wouldn't it? If I was dancing around, surrounded by fire, fire, and then you just ran across the front like that, with a beard of flames going across the... Like that, he starts melting all over the place. You know, maybe it's the beard catches and you end up some kind of Siamese wolf-faced child. A wolf's face and then flames coming out the bottom there, like Ghost Rider. You know how he's got the flaming skull? No, you don't. No, no Ross. We've all got lives and that. The, um, so, no, why didn't you want to tell me your name before? What was the... What? Rick Borden. You see, that's clever what you did there, because you went, Rick Borden, but you actually pointed to the man <laughs> whose name you took. That's, and he went, what are you doing? The first rule of taking an assumed identity <laughs> is don't have the bloke that you're passing yourself off as being. Next, Rick Borden, there he is, that's me. I don't, surely we're meant to keep our identities secret. <laughs> they, that's a nightmare if you ever go into the witness relocation programme. You're going to be in deep trouble, aren't you? What's your name? Rick Borden, there he is. <laughs> I don't understand. Is it you or is it me? I don't know. We're Siamese twins. <laughs> Give us your face. <laughs> the, no, it's quite all right, because no, I find, as a rule, this is the friendliest country on the planet. I'm quite surprised that you didn't want to tell me any. I was in a shop earlier on, and this woman said to me, I, was just, I, I bought a magazine, and I was just walking out, and the woman just went, have a great day. Have a great day, not have a nice day. Everyone else in the world says, have a nice day. She went, have a great day. No, that's too much pressure for me. <laughs> I can have a nice day. Like, no, there's a big difference between nice and great. There's a, there's a leap there, you know. Like, uh, I mean, if you're going on your holidays, it would be much better to go and visit the nice wall of China. Do you know what I mean? It would just... <laughs> Keep off. <laughs> Alexander the Nice, you know, the, um, the, uh, goodness gracious, nice balls of fire. 
but have a great day. And I'm just thinking, like, nice day, dead easy, you know. Stroll around a zoo in lovely, comfortable trousers. <laughs> Maybe he's looking at monkeys. Hearing the sound of children's laughing, you know? A great day would be laughing at children being attacked by monkeys. <laughs> in comfortable trousers! <laughs> That's the difference between a nice day and a great day, right there. Have a great day. Where am I going to find monkeys in trousers? <laughs> and how am I going to get them riled up and angry enough to fight with children? <laughs> You're putting too much pressure on me, love. Just back off. The, uh, but no, it's a fantastically... So friend my wife's Australian. You can't get more friendly than that, you know. <laughs> uh, sorry, I didn't mean it like that, I didn't. <laughs> What? I don't understand. Is he suggesting his wife is a slut? <laughs> no. I'm saying that, uh... No, I'll tell you what it is, right? The only time that you're not friendly is on those Give Blood adverts. Ooh, you're not fond of English blood, are you, on there? You can give blood. Have you... Would you like to give blood? You're eligible as long as you've never been to England or eaten meat in England or been anywhere near England or even so much as received a postcard from anyone that's ever been to England because their blood is wrong and disease. <laughs> dirty, dirty, send them outside of the city wall. <laughs> You want me blood? No, don't look at me! You will infect me with your English eyes. <laughs> the, um, yeah. No, my wife, right, we were in, um, where were, Morocco, right? We were strolling through Morocco, right? And uh, the, you know when people come up and ask you where you're from in those sort of countries, you know, they go, my friend, my friend, where are you from, my friend? <laughs> no, I'm... <laughs> I'm getting the feeling that none of you lot have ever left Canberra. <laughs> uh, no. no, we don't know, Ross. Once a year, the show comes to town. <laughs> well... <laughs> we're only really interested in foreigners if we're attacking them with hammers. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> There's a wolf. <laughs> Thank you. No, we were in Morocco, right? And we were strolling through the main street, and these little... What is your real name? <laughs> it's what? Peter. Peter. Thanks very much there. The sun helping me out there. The, uh, and what do you do for a living, Peter, when you... Nothing illegal. Nothing illegal. <laughs> You're a very defensive man, aren't you? <laughs> there was no suggestion of illegal activities. But straight away, nothing illegal. I've done nothing illegal. I haven't done anything wrong, and you can, you, you can come to my house and search it. You won't find anything. That's right, I'm not a copper. The, uh, that was great. He went, nothing illegal, and your son... I like the way he just patted you like that as if to go, Oh, Dad. I love the way you can say that with a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> Your highly illegal activities are the toast of the area. <laughs> That's the only reason he grew the beard, to hide the slightly guilty look on his face. <laughs> the, uh, combing your hair down like that. <laughs> Nothing illegal. <laughs> 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 Oh, dear me. No, no, God, what do you do for a job? You can tell me. We'll have a bit of a chat now, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You really are. Like, you just go... With, uh, 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 mm, well, yeah, the, yeah, I'm surprised you didn't just set fire to be it and just run off. <laughs> See ya! <laughs> wow, he's like some kind of ghost rider. I don't know who that is. <laughs> The, uh, look, don't ask him for advice. <laughs> he turned into his son going, what should I say? <laughs> it's all right, I'm not from work for the duel. I'm not... <laughs> it's not like... So, this isn't just a big trick that I've laid on. <laughs> the, uh, right, we'll just ask him what he does, and when he tells us he's signing on, but secretly working at the same time, boom, we've got him. <laughs> no, go on, what are you... <laughs> you can't tell me. 
<laughs> That's great. He went, I can't tell you. And his daughter went, construction. <laughs> That's great. Look at that. <laughs> Look at the loyalty involved there. That's, he's what? He's wrong. <laughs> That's great. He went, he's wrong. And he went, no, I'm not. <laughs> it's what? You're into manufacturing. Oh. <laughs> What sort of manufacturing? <laughs> For construction. <laughs> oh, you're mysterious. <laughs> Manufacture a forecast. <laughs> and what do you manufacture? For construction. <laughs> Do you mean you manufacture stuff that is used in the construction industry, or do you mean you manufacture something that is then constructed? <laughs> Possibly by Chinese kids. <laughs> what? It's not me setting up sweatshops on the outskirts of camera. <laughs> oh, Chinese children? No, what do you... Ducks? Or ducts? Like... <laughs> what? <laughs> ducts? Yeah, that'd be good if, if all of a sudden I was hit in the side of the head. <laughs> what the hell? I told you to duck, but you wouldn't listen, would you? <laughs> the... Uh, ducts. The... those big silver... the big silver things that Tom Cruise sneaks through. <laughs> Din, 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 din. No. <laughs> you don't know. Tom Cruise could sneak through a number of things. You know. Well, that sounded wrong. <laughs> <laughs> just not vaginas, apparently. So, um, the. What? I'm just saying. I, I don't. You know what? I don't know. It's only rumours. The uh, ducks, or the. Are they silver, or the. <laughs> this is great. This could have been a two-minute conversation. <laughs> and, I just went, and he just went, oh, I hope this isn't what you do when you're pitching to potential buyers. Right, then, we've got a sales meeting. Would you like to tell us a bit about your product? Uh, uh, oh, fuck. It's, um... <laughs> Well, it's construction things, and it's like ducks and that, and if you want them, buy them. If you don't, then, you know... Mm. Do you want to see me cock? Look, this. There's my cock. Look at that. It's... Uh... <laughs> it's a beauty, isn't it? I tell you what, you might not think it looks like much now, but it won me this wolf. Look at this wolf! I want a wolf! They... No, go on, what's the... Cable ducting uh, in offices. I, oh, the sil it's silver, though, isn't it? It is. It's what? Skirting. Isn't, it, isn't that conduit? <laughs> it's much fancier than conduit. <laughs> it could be. So it's like conduit, but la -de da conduit. <laughs> That's what you should have on your slogan. It should say, right, it should say, Big Beardy Peter, la -de da conduit. <laughs> I, I can see it on the side of a van, on a business card, tattooed on your huge testicles. <laughs> Beardy Peter, la -de da conduit for all your la -de da conduit needs. Wandering onto a construction site. Hmm, I see the wiring along here. Were you planning on using conduit? Yes, we were. <laughs> I laugh in your face. You need my la -de da ducts. Yes. Would you like a volivant? <laughs> One of the most la -de da foods ever invented. People only eat volivants when they're being la -de da don't they? Nobody comes home and goes, bloody hell, I'm starving. Got any volivants? <laughs> you know. You don't see construction workers opening up their packed lunches and that, but, oh, what's me missus putting here to do? Oh, volivants. <laughs> no, the only time volivants are ever eaten is off to trays held like this. 
Would you like a Volivan? I don't mind if I do. Mmm. Ooh, yes. Let's put some lard de dark conduit down there. <laughs> the, um... Volivans. That's the French you've got a lot to answer for. The Volivans. The, uh, You know what Volivan stands for? It's French for inadequate pie. <laughs> yeah. A Volivan. There's the involivon, which is uh, where you involuntarily put chicken into pastry. <laughs> I don't want to! Why am I doing this? Oh, he's making an involuntary von. <laughs> <laughs> I said that and even I don't understand it. <laughs> like, oh, that doesn't, strictly speaking, make sense. It's funny, but it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Welcome to my life. Um, anyway, what was I talking about? I was talking... What was I... Uh, what? Morocco! Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Morocco! Sorry, I forgot to warn you at the start. If you haven't seen me before, there will be tangents. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> yeah, bloody right. The first 20 minutes of the show was you bloody talking to a wolf. <laughs> I weren't expecting that, some sort of man from Snowy River live. <laughs> <laughs> There's a river and it's snowy. There's a wolf and he's sitting right here. He's my friend, he's my only friend. Now he's killed by a bearded man's car. Oh, I'm the man from Snowy. Sorry. <laughs> oh dear, you'll never be able to watch a nature documentary ever again. <laughs> the next time they go and the wolves are walking across the woodland, trying to find... Oh God, no. <laughs> Check the woods for bearded men. <laughs> We could make a remake of Dances with Wolves. <laughs> hey? <laughs> you playing Kevin Costner. Pants round your ankles. <laughs> Staggering around all the Indians looking on, going, what the hell's he doing? <laughs> Put it away, Peter. <laughs> Peter and the Wolf. <laughs> hey? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes! The, uh, who was it did Peter and the Wolf? It was, uh, the, you know, the... the... <laughs> who? Was it Tchaikovsky? Prokofiev. Oh, that's got to be the most lardy da heckle I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Tchaikovsky. Hey, where's Prokofiev? The fact that that's said in an Aussie accent just makes all the difference, doesn't it? <laughs> it was fucking put coffee in! <laughs> <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, what the fuck are you fucking talking about, fucking Tchaikovsky? <laughs> Oi! Tchaikovsky! Ah, fucking idiot! <laughs> I think you thought it was Prokofiev. <laughs> Volivon? I do mind if I do. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway... The... <laughs> the... <laughs> oh, I like you lot. There's a... No, that's what I was telling you about. I was in Morocco. <laughs> yes, you were! You were in Morocco! How long is it gonna take you to tell us about Morocco? We got plenty of time. You know, the, uh, but the Sunday celebrations. <laughs> Canberra's nearly three years old. <laughs> Four years ago, this was just a car park. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing what you can do with some shovels and a bit of false turf. <laughs> so, the, 
the point is, I was in Morocco, right? And we were walking through the main street, right? And I was with my wife, who's an Aussie, right? And the little kids come up to you and they go, Mate, friend, where are you from? Where are you from? And I, I can't be arsed with them, so I always say that I'm from places uh, from the Star Wars films, you know, <laughs> just... No, cos they've learnt an expression from every country, but, they, you know, you throw them a curveball, you go, you go, I'm from Alderaan. <laughs> huh? Uh, you know, what they don't know is Alderaan was actually destroyed. But... <laughs> The, um, <laughs> and don't say Hoth, because Wallander might go, but my friend, that is an ice planet and uninhabitable. <laughs> you know, and that can lead to problems. But anyway, the point is, this little kid came up, right, and he went, my friend, my friend, where are you from, my friend, where are you from, right? And my wife turns around and she just goes, Australia, right? And this kid, what they normally do is they come out like with England, they go, you know, God bless the Queen, fish and chips, lovely jubbly. You know, <laughs> some sort of English thing, right? <laughs> well, this kid, he did an absolute belter, right? He turned around and she went, Australia! And this kid came out with an expression. Could have been anything, right? Could have been, uh, good air, mate. Could have been shrimp on the barbie. Could have been crikey, anything, right? Any, you know, d d Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Uh, no, you know what he came out with? I thought, you little genius, right? <laughs> My friend, where are you from? Australia. And this is what he said. Australia? A dingo ate my baby! <laughs> A dingo ate my baby! I was pissing myself. I was laughing so much that he kept repeating it. A dingo ate my baby! A dingo ate my baby! A dingo ate my baby! It was like he was doing a little song. A dingo is my baby. Dingo is my baby. Dingo is my baby. The, um, the, uh, it's a good job Peter wasn't around, because as he went to grab the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... The thing was, I've taught them a new one now, right? So if you're in Morocco, right, and this was me, right? This was me that did this one, right? If you're in Morocco and a little kid comes up to you and goes, my friend, my friend, where are you from? Right? If you now turn to him and go, Australia, he'll go, free Chappelle Corby! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's an idiot, isn't she? <laughs> oh, just... <laughs> Why is it that all Australians locked up in foreign prisons sound like 1960s Motown acts? <clears throat> no, seriously, next time you're watching the news, listen. And now, Chappelle Corby and the Barley Nine! <laughs> -la -la. Ooh, ooh, -la -la -la. Ooh. <laughs> it's quite hard to do that when you're behind bars, isn't it? You sort of go... Tuk, 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 tuk. <laughs> you have to do more of this dance. <laughs> so you can go through the bars. <laughs> Some of you are not really sure now. <laughs> yeah, they might be convicted drug dealers, but they're our convicted <laughs> drug dealers. The, I nearly got stopped myself. I always have trouble at customs, right? There's been two incidents recently. One, I was in Dubai, right? Coming through... Because, basically, when you look like me and you get off the plane... And, granted, I was in the fancy end and I got off first and the bloke obviously went, Oh, he's clearly a drug dealer. You know, <laughs> I might as well have had a T-shirt on going, I love Chappelle Corby. <laughs> And I got off the plane, and this customs officer, right, and if you get caught over there, <laughs> chop your head off, right? The fella goes to me, goes, yo, my friend, come, come with me. And I went, what, hey, what? And he's coming here. Standing in this little room like that. And I learned a very important lesson. Don't take the piss out of customs officers, <laughs> right? If there's one thing I can pass on to you, right? He turns to me, right, and he goes, Do you take drugs? I went, Not really. The answer's no, right? <laughs> no! 
I don't take drugs, never have done. I know it's difficult to believe, but I've never, I don't bother, but you know, not really, I mean, no, no, I don't, right? And he goes, and this, uh, he went, take your clothes off. He was gonna do the full strip search, he went, take your clothes off, right? The correct response to that is, certainly officer, take your clothes off and let him do what he needs to do. Wait, don't do this, take your clothes off. Oh, buy me a drink first, <laughs> right? That's all I'm saying. Don't do it, it's not worth it. Cos there's no one there to laugh, that was the thing. <laughs> He's not gonna find that funny, you know? And I took my clothes off, and all the time I'm just, you know, and I didn't, and I was nervous, I mean, you know, I've not, I've not really been naked in close proximity with another man in a kiosk, uh, not a, a cubicle, not a kiosk, obviously, that's <laughs> the, uh, uh, it was weird. He was strip searching me and selling ice creams at the same time. <laughs> it was, what, what are you doing? The, uh, <laughs> if he says, pass me the nuts, I'll punch him. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> There's a lot of kids getting freaked out that day. Mummy, can I have a... <laughs> no, it, a, a cubicle, that's what it was, not a kiosk. And I, so I go into this cubicle and he says, take your clothes off. So I, I took my clothes off. And you don't want to say something like, are you going to get yours off as well? So I don't <laughs> feel self-conscious. <laughs> you don't want to hear him go, do you mind if I dim the lights? You don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> Starts lighting a few scented candles. Or... <laughs> so I'm there, naked, in front of this fella, and I was so nervous, and I don't get nervous. I'm, I've, ne I've not really ever been a nervous person, but this is the first time in my life that I genuinely... My heart started going, I was going, oh, God, <laughs> this could end badly, this. And I'm nude, and I'm trying to be relaxed whilst being nude, you know, in the presence of a uniformed man, you know. And, uh... <laughs> You know, I'm not, you know I, f I felt like jumping up and going, come on, let's pretend it's the end of Officer and a Gentleman. Come on. The I didn't know. And I, I tried to look relaxed, but it didn't matter how relaxed I tried to look standing nude in a cubicle. It just looked camp. It just didn't... It I, I even went for one of them at one point. I thought, that's, that's not right, is it? The, <laughs> hello. The, and I, so I'm stood there like that, and I, I was like I was in a, 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 a disco in the 80s. I was trying... <laughs> and he said to me, he went, my friend, can you move your... <laughs> Honestly? He wanted me to move my bits to the side <laughs> so he could check me undercarriage for contraband. <laughs> that's, not the, that's not the words he used. <laughs> the, can you move your bits so I can check your undercarriage for contraband? <laughs> and don't try using that as a chat up line either. <laughs> so, all right, then, any chance of moving your bits so I can check your undercarriage for contraband? I'll call the police, get away. <laughs> so, he said, he said, move your bits so I can check you. Now, I was so nervous in the situation, I didn't realise that he meant I could use my hands. <laughs> Why would you? So I'm stood there doing this. Using Jedi mind control. I thought, is it wrong to give him a flick? Is it wrong? You know, my friend, I saw you use your hips to flick it to his head. At one point, I thought, why don't I just pull one of my hairs out, tie it off, take it round the back, tie it to my arse hairs, and then just clench my buttocks so that it just. And I ended up with a six-week residency. They roll up, roll up. 
<laughs> and this, the other time, just recently, I was in New Zealand, right? And I swear to God, the interval's on its way. I can see some of you just going, if we don't have an interval soon, <laughs> we're gonna rupture our insides. <laughs> Don't worry. I know when it's time for the interval, cos I can see the piss rising in your eye. <laughs> you'll know when it's time to go, cos you'll be watching the show in sepia. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> It'll be like the start of Sons and Daughters, you know. <laughs> Look at that. That always sorts out the people who don't work for a living. <laughs> it's a good one, that, yeah. The, um, no, I, was in, I went to New Zealand, and I went to... It, well, it started at Passport Control. That was the... Uh, not Passport Control. The, I, it, that's where it ended up. It started at the, um, the check-in bit, right? I put my suitcase on, and I had, uh, I had my handbag, right? And Not a handbag. <laughs> like, luggage, hand luggage. It wasn't a handbag. It was a man's bag. <laughs> it was a gentleman's leather satchel, <laughs> if you must know. It wasn't... A handbag. The, uh, <laughs> Mind you, I was wearing stilettos and a boob tube, so, you know... <laughs> it might as well have been. I wasn't. I made that up. But... <laughs> so I had me, me hand luggage there, but I also had my motorcycle helmet because I was going to hire a bike in New Zealand, right? And I said to the woman, went, there's my case, I've got my hand luggage, and I've got this motorcycle helmet, thanks very much. And I was about to walk up, and she went, Ah! One bag! And I went, what? You went, one carry-on bag only. And I went, well, that's my bag. That's just a helmet, isn't it? Motorcycle helmet. Doesn't weigh much, not going to take up much room. We'll overlook that one. So, and I went to walk. Ah! One! Back! And I was a bit stumped, cos my case had already gone, so I couldn't put it in there. I couldn't leave it, cos I needed it when I got to New Zealand. It wouldn't fit in the bag, and I didn't know what to do. And I just half-jokingly said, can I wear it? <laughs> and you know what she said? Yeah. <laughs> she said I could wear it. My hat. I said, are you serious? She went, well, it's sort of a hat, isn't it? You can wear it. <laughs> so I put my motorcycle helmet on in the airport and walked through to the customs area like this. I'm so used to wearing it on my motorbike, I fastened it up. <laughs> I fastened it up. Safety first. <laughs> what I should have done was, I should have put it on, fastened it, flipped my visor down and gone... Aah! You can't have people... What, in this day and age, with terrorism, you can't have people wearing helmets. I look like the most obvious terrorist you've ever seen in your life. It's like I was getting on the plane going, that's right, my friend, I am going to hijack the plane and crash it into the side of a building, but I will be fine. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And then I get to New Zealand, and the woman at passport control, and normally I have a bit of a laugh at passport control because I've got my passport and you're not allowed to smile in your photo, you have to be serious. So what I did was I gelled my hair up <laughs> and I went. Because <laughs> that's not a smile, that's a frown, that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what I do, right, is I walk up and I hand over my passport, right, and they look down like that. And just before they look up, I do this. <laughs> And they go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. And I go. Well, sadly, the woman in New Zealand didn't find that quite as funny as she might have done. <laughs> she looked at my passport, and she looked at my occupation, because you've got to fill in your occupation. It's a comedian, right? <laughs> Usually, that's enough. <laughs> and she looks at it, and she, she looks up, and she goes, comedian, and I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> and this, I couldn't believe this, the cheek of this woman, she went, tell me a joke. <laughs> I thought you were opening a can of worms here, love, to be honest. <laughs> an hour later, she's there going, oh, is there any chance of an interval? I just, <laughs> just, just, just a little, just a, blah, blah, blah. <laughs>
And I said, well, you, I said, not really, not here now. I'm not going to, you know, with it. And you, you should come and see the show. Right? And you know what she said? She went, how much are the tickets? I said, I don't know. I get in for free. <laughs> you know? It's one of the perks of the job. <laughs> she went, tell me a joke. I'm going, are you serious? You still want me to, you want me to tell you a joke? She said, tell me a joke. I thought, this is a nightmare. Does she make everyone that comes into New Zealand prove what they do? <laughs> I wish I'd written camel trainer. <laughs> you know? Go on then, train me a camel. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> Camels dancing round the airport now. <laughs> Bloody hell, he does train camels well, doesn't he? <laughs> the, uh, she, she, I, I was in a cab yesterday, and I said to the cab driver, he went, uh, he said, this isn't my normal job. And I said, what's your normal job? And he, what he was trying to say, like he was rushing or something, and he was trying to say, I teach horses dressage. And, but he couldn't, he didn't know the, well, I said, what's your normal job? And he went, I make horses do unusual movements. <laughs> What the hell is that? <laughs> Whack them with a bit of bamboo, wouldn't them? <laughs> Just get the blacksmith to put springy shoes on them. <laughs> Blimey, that horse, doing, that horse is doing an unusual movement. I just said that whore's doing an unusual one. <laughs> oh, no, that's what they should do. To cut down on street walkers, they should force them to have springy shoes on. <laughs> just an idea. The, um, I, I didn't know whether he meant, like, movements as in, you know, I don't know how you do that. Feed them different types of food and stuff. And, That'd be a horse whisperer, wouldn't it? If he just, if he whispered a shape and the horse could actually do it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Just... <laughs> do one that comes out the shape of an Oscar. <laughs> Blimey, that's an unusual movement. <laughs> I'd like to thank my family. I'd like to thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so this woman's going, tell me a joke! And I, I was racking my brains and I thought, I'll just, so I thought, I'll just see what comes out. <laughs> Not a good idea. <laughs> Said, uh, how many customs officers does it take to change a light bulb? Now, with hindsight, I should have learned from the strip search experience in Dubai. <laughs> but I didn't. As she looked at me, she went, I don't know how many customs officers does it take to change a light? Well, I don't know either. I was just winging it, you know. And I was quite pleased with what I came out. Well, I'm pleased with what I came up with now. At the time, not so much. <laughs> and this is what I said. I went, she went, tell me a joke. How many customs officers does it take to change a light bulb? said, I don't know how many customs officers does it take to change a light bulb. To which I said, I don't know either, but it must be difficult to change light bulbs when you've got your hand up someone's arse. <laughs> and I'm pleased to inform you that I am free of prostate cancer. So that's <laughs> all good. Anyway, listen, go on up and in the pool, do what you have to do. Use the toilet, win a wolf. I'll see you back here in 15 minutes time. 15 right back. Sure. <laughs>
<laughs> that was brilliant. Okay, you were all clapping there, and I looked down, and the fellow with the wolf, uh, sorry, Randy Pan, had put it, uh, the wolf looking at me like, I have a name. <laughs> I'm not just the wolf. Yeah, but Peter's become the bearded man, so, you know. But he did a brilliant thing there. You were all clapping like that. Yay! Like that. And he'd reached around and was making Randy Pan clap. <laughs> but because you were wearing black and you had your hand behind him, I couldn't see the fact that your arms were there. And I went, oh! <laughs> The wolf is genuinely clapping. This is brilliant. <laughs> No, he's only clapping because he's going, I was on the stage, which means I'm owed a performance fee. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, people throughout the land will be going, oh, brilliant, go and see Ross. Well, don't see Ross, go and see the shitty wolf. <laughs> and he might make an appearance as well. So, anyway, uh, welcome. Was it a good interval, all in all? Yeah. Yes. You haven't got him so that you can pretend you're a blind lad, are you? <laughs> That's not the plan. You, it's what? It is a, it's not a good idea at all, because how many blind people have a dodgy-looking wolf with them that wears clothes? <laughs> They're what? They're blind, they don't know. <laughs> I walked into that one, didn't I? As the blind fella would, if he had that as his guide dog. Jesus, that blind man just walked into something over there. I'm not surprised. He clearly has some kind of cheaply made Chinese acrylic toy on, a, <laughs> on the end of a bit of wire as he wanders around the place with it. Do they, do they have the... the yeah, they, they do. I couldn't work out. Because I had the guide dog there and the stick as well. They do, don't they? They have the dog... Do they have the dog and the stick? Or is it just the... Yes! No! Yeah! <laughs> I do, 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 do. I've, what a controversial response that was there. <laughs> yes, no, possibly. They're blind, they don't know. <laughs> they just have whatever gets put in their hand. <laughs> Walking along with a clothes prop in there. Uh, or a mic stand. <laughs> they, um, they, do they? I'm not sure. Yes, I'm sure they have a dog. And... This is all the show's going to be, unless we clear this up. I mean, obviously, the stick has to be the right length, cos you don't want to be... Like, the pavement, whack the dog. Pavement, whack the dog, you know. Essentially walking along, smacking a dog with a stick. Peter. What? Peter? <laughs> no, it's the blind stick, it's not him and his massive... <laughs> oh, dear. A blind man with his bits. Dogs like that. Oh, God, I'm going to bite that in a minute. The, uh, the <laughs> Give a dog a bone. The, no, no, don't. You've let me down, you've let yourselves down. That was unnecessary smut, and I do apologise. But it was there, I thought, oh, there's the net. There we go, poof, it's in. It's in. The, um, that's football, by the way, for you lot going, what's that freaky game he's playing? Surely he should pick it up and then kick it and then fight with somebody and then... <laughs> it's all that business. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be quite good, cos the blind man could just join the end of, like, a pipe band or something and just beat the dog in time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> That's... that's my special effect. <laughs> oh. It's not easy when you've got a metal spine. <laughs> <laughs> that was great, that. The fact you're quite happy to allow me to take the piss out of a blind man. But I just crossed the line a little bit too much there. So I'm going to take the piss out of pipe bands. <laughs> the, um... 
I don't even know what to look at first down here. Somebody's, somebody's left a mug on the stage here. They, I don't know whether or not that's a gift for me or whether one of the uh, lazy slack horse crew has wandered through and just gone, oh, I'll just leave that there. And they, um, that's a... What's it say? I'll have a look, shall I? <laughs> Oh, are you Grissom from CSI? <laughs> the, um... <laughs> What's it say, Ross? Have a look, there might be a clue. <laughs> mm. It says, gimmicky gifts, Australia, made in Indonesia. <laughs> Telephone number 029554-6080. That's not much of a novelty. Oh, it's on the side. <laughs> Fool to myself. The uh, hard work has made me what I am today. Fucked. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> you just laughed at the side of a jokey mug. If I'd known that, I would have just brought out a hundred mugs. <laughs> just picked them up and read the thing there like that. You don't have to be mad to work here, but it helped. <laughs> He's a genius. <laughs> you feel, you're making me feel slightly less special now. <laughs> Thank you very much. There's not often somebody goes to the effort of, uh, you know, thinks nobles in our city is here. How can we make him feel welcome? Should we applaud? Should we cheer? No, let's give him the gift of crockery. <laughs> That's... Either that or somebody's come along thinking that this is an episode of Bogan Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> mm. Fucking beauty, that is fucking. Well, yes, um, I'll just have a look for you. Um, as you can see, this is inscripted on the side. Uh, hard work has made me what I am today. And normally it's slightly worn, but I believe the original makers had the word fucked <laughs> just underneath there, um, denoting that it was a novelty gift. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this was made in Indonesia. And um, <laughs> if we just have a look on the bottom here, you should see, yes, it is made in Indonesia and um, by a company called Gimmicky Gifts. And if I'm not mistaken, that company's phone number was 02... <laughs> no, it's, uh, oh, you a fucking ripper, you are, you fucking beauty, yeah. That's worth about four dollars. <laughs> oh, you <yeah>, fuck! <laughs> mm. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. You know what a bogan shouted at me the other day, right? And they love to, out of utes, I've noticed. There's... <laughs> Do you think when bogans are buying their utes, they actually, they say, uh, you know, they're just having a look at what they're uh, going to get in the four-wheel drive and just uh, all the different features, and they just go, You're more than about trying to fucking bring you. Get <laughs> Yeah, it's fucking beauty, easy. That. This fella. <laughs> I'm quite enjoying doing a gig holding a mug. I wish that, <laughs> wish that had a bit of hot tea in it now. The uh, and myself and Sir Peter Yusinov. <laughs> the um, you know what's good about mugs, right? You, you can uh, it, you know obviously you can drink out of them. That's that's quite a good thing about mugs. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ross, for that bit of advice. <laughs> oh, how does he do it? <laughs> the... <laughs> no, what's quite good is if you... You might not realise, if you hold a mug close enough to your face, you can uh, accurately impersonate Ronan Keating. I'll show you, look. Push me in your face, let me know that you need me. Does it feel like I have it? You're never leave me. And I touch of your face, let me catch you wherever I fall. You say it best when you say nothing at all. 
The, um... This is great. This is the start of the second half. Just me doing admin. <laughs> Slight, slightly scary when there's an actual uh, somebody's written me a note on a picture of my own face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just put that down there. Huh? Uh, you will tell me if you see Tiny Ross creeping up on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, this. Somebody's written on here. For God's sake, are you bloody stalking me? Somebody asked me this the other night. Ross, what's better, pirates or ninjas? I can't help feeling I'm not required here this evening. <laughs> I've got a feeling that we could have just turned the lights on and you would have quite happily just shouted at each other. <laughs> oh, it's ninjas! It's ninjas every time. There's, uh, obviously, you know... Because... <laughs> I love the fact you pronounced it Prokofiev. Oh, <laughs> night, Prokofiev! Oh, no, that's right, the bogan. He shouts at me. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the use, right? This is brilliant, right? I've no idea what this means, right? Oh, and I haven't forgotten about the most dangerous thing about riding around Australia, either. <laughs> that's all in there. I know some of you are going, he's forgotten about that. He started talking about that before he got waylaid with the wolf and then all of that, and the... And the uh, uh, and uh, I'm not me, it's him, he's me, and I'm... It's what? The youth. The youth. I'll get to the youth! <laughs> Jesus, I was reminding you of other things. Tell us about the youth! <laughs> Blimey, that's some sort of... Are you some kind of young bogan, and you think I'm some kind of cult leader? Tell us about the youth! <laughs> Tell us, please. Are you... Are you actually getting aroused by that? <laughs> that to you is the most erotic thing. I'm... Tell me about the youth. Describe its capacity for. <laughs> Describe its capacity for carrying things on the back. <laughs> oh, is it four wheel drive or two wheel drive? <laughs> Does it have driving lights? <laughs> is there a slightly sad looking dog tied to the back of. <laughs> The um, I love that when you see, see somebody drive near you and there's a dog in the back and it doesn't know when the corners are coming. It's just... <laughs> Slightly more entertaining than dancing with the stars, I think. You know? It's exactly the same thing. I feel like dressing up a dog in a little ballroom dancing outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and then putting it on as a show. The, uh, yeah, no, it's a fella, and he shouts at me, and he goes, Oi! I went, what? And he went, your mum's your dad! <laughs> what the hell does that mean? Your mum's your dad. And then he sort of nodded as if to go, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I speak only in truths. <laughs> it was like some kind of bogan Confucius. <laughs> <sighs> Tell us. Tell us, oh, great wise one. Ah, uh, yeah, your mom's your dad. <laughs> Wow. And so the prophecy hath been told. The <laughs> and lo, the Lord did say, your mum is your dad. <laughs> Wise words. That is in the Bible. The <laughs> look at you. No, it's not. <laughs> That's clearly bollocks. <laughs> yes. And so is the rest of the Bible, so there's no difference. <laughs> so, thank you. Yes. Yeah, oh, 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 hello. One rogue religious person going out now. Now, come on. <laughs> no, it's nonsense, right? Anyway. <laughs>
Are we all right here? Have I? <laughs> no, if there's one thing that shits me up the wall, if there's what, because I'm a very relaxed man, I'm the most chilled out bloke you're ever likely to meet, but the one thing that winds me up is bloody religious people. <laughs> oh. Just, that doesn't matter what religion you are. And let me just say, if there are any people of faith in here this evening, and there might be, let me just say, you're an idiot! <laughs> That's all I have to say on the subject, right? <laughs> just think it through. That's all I've got to say on the subject. <laughs> think it through, right? Stop reading old books full of nonsense and make up your own ideas. That's the brilliant thing about the human imagination. You can just make something up and then live by those rules. You don't have to listen to that nonsense, right? There was a woman, right, in England. Oh, she... <laughs> Sorry, I should be careful going... Rah! I don't want to set old Randy Pan off going... Ah! You know, and then of course you with your beard, the you unlock the inner wolf, and the next thing you know, all of us are rolling around on the floor with raw meat in our mouth. <laughs> I love your beard; it's fantastic. <laughs> it's a proper man's beard. You know what you look like? You look like uh, what's the best? <laughs> That's great. He just went. <laughs> so don't forget my business. What? Show us the beard. No. It's my picture on the posters. As if he were, I'm a, he's happy to talk to me and be part of the show, but he doesn't want to be paraded around. Just like that. Look at the freak. Look at the bearded freak. You have a lovely sit down and don't be bowed by peer pressure. He's not your private beard dancer. <laughs> Come on, show us the beard, show us the beard. It's a lovely beard. It's like, you're like Teen Wolf after he's let himself go. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like middle-aged wolf, that's you. With it, love, it's nice, I like it. The, I love the sinister way you pointed at me, though. <laughs> Don't forget, Ross. My lordy dark conduit is merely a front. <laughs> My other activities are highly illegal. <laughs> In fact, this beard isn't even real! <laughs> that was it on elastic there. <laughs> By the way, just if you wondered why I went like that, it was like you were pulling it out to go, eh? and then replacing it. I'm not suggesting that the beard is that long. <laughs> in a big triangle. Uh, <laughs> this beard isn't even real. <laughs> anyway, the, why is he called Randy Pan? You still, you still haven't explained. You don't know. Well, at some point, he didn't come. The, when the fella that you won him off, right? The slightly dodgy carny, right? <laughs> when he handed him to you, did he, did he say, take care of this slightly dodgy synthetic fire trap wolf. He shall be named Randy Pan. <laughs> then there must... What's your name? Daniel. Daniel, right. And so how long have you had him now? A year? Yeah, about that. About that, roughly. About yeah. That. yeah. Give or take. It's not important. I'm just meaning, you know, I'm not going to ask you to present documents. <laughs> Excuse me, but uh, it appears that you've had this wolf for only 11 months. You told me a year. <laughs> You're clearly in contravention of the Canberra Synthetic Wolf Act. <laughs> it is illegal for any man who is not technically blind to own... <laughs> Surely it's medically blind, not technically blind. <laughs> yes. Are you technically blind? Yes. Well, if I do this, technically I'm blind. <laughs> but, you know, strictly speaking... <laughs> Simply having a fringe that comes down too far. Technically, I'm blind. Medically, I'm not. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't cut your hair today. You're technically blind. 
please, please cut my hair. No, because that would mean it wouldn't be a haircut, it would be a medical procedure. <laughs> oh, that's, that's interesting what you've done there. The, um, so, did you win it for your life? Is this your girlfriend with you here? Yes, how long have you been going out? Roughly. <laughs> Let's not get into some kind of 11 months and 27 days. <laughs> the, uh, oh, what? Over six months. Oh, I see. So you pretty much won that before she came on the scene. <laughs> oh, you couldn't have made your timing worse if you tried, could you? That would have been much better if you started going out with her, went to the show, <laughs> ding! Oh, you're such a strong man. Here, have this dodgy synthetic wolf. <laughs> that would have been a lovely romantic scene. Instead, she meets you, comes back to your house, and the wolf is already there. <laughs> with a mysterious name that nobody knows where it came from. <laughs> What's that slightly dodgy-looking wolf you've got in the corner there? Would you like him? <laughs> I'm not sure this relationship's working. <laughs> Get a taxi quickly. <laughs> the, um, so you weren't with him when the, the show happened? No. 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 <laughs> Has he won you anything since? I've got a monkey from Singapore. you got a monkey from Singapore? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's... You're my kind of lady. <laughs> the, uh, that's, that's brilliant. From him or just... <laughs> like, or in the post? <laughs> what the hell's this package? <laughs> <laughs> Little arms coming out the side. <laughs> what the hell? What's this? I've been saying... <laughs> oh, I've got a Singaporean monkey. Infected with the deadly SARS virus. <laughs> the uh, no monkey pox. That's what you'd have from a, wouldn't it? From a monkey. The uh, did he go to Singapore? Yes. yes. Oh, that's just as well. Um, <laughs> did he go for the Singapore show? Because <laughs> that was just the heat. He won the he won the wolf, and they went blimey. You're going to represent Australia <laughs> in the Carnival Olympics. That'd be great, wouldn't it? You and the rest of the team all going out there. You're the fella that bangs the thing. There's a bloke that can get rings over Coke bottles. <laughs> Another man who's very good at hookah duck. <laughs> He's a young farm boy who practices with real ducks. <laughs> there you go. The, um... <laughs> I said duck, not ducked before you start. <laughs> I sometimes play hooker ducked. <laughs> sometimes when we've put lardy dark conduit in and it's just slipped down into the cavity, what the hell are we going to do? It's time to play hooker ducked. <laughs> I've almost got it, I've almost got it. Here it comes. Oh, it's a tricky one. I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> oh, I've got a massive hydroponic drug outfit at home. <laughs> the, um... <laughs> That's a bit scary when somebody goes, warmer. <laughs> when I say hydroponic drug outfit, I mean a big outfit. I don't mean you've got an outfit. <laughs> That's a dead giveaway, that, isn't it? <laughs> Turning up to a local function with a huge heat lamp above your head. <laughs> like a hat with a heat lamp coming off it like that. And then just all marijuana plants down your arms. Just all down there. The uh, Just walking in like that. Do you like my hydroponic outfit? <laughs> uh, I tell you what, you could cultivate seeds in my pants with the heat that I'm generating. <laughs> oh, blimey. I think I'm growing cress in there at the moment. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> the, um, right, so how did he become known as... I haven't forgotten about the Christian. Or the dangerous thing that... about riding the motorbike. <laughs> he's, he's like, I don't know what's going on now, Ross. <laughs> I'm utterly confused. <laughs> the, so why Randy Pan? Well, there's, there's a 
Oh, the Bill Hicks thing, Randy Pan the Goat. Is that what he was called, Randy Pan? And he does all that. <laughs> ah, you could have told me that an hour ago. <laughs> but no. Oh, I see. So you've called the wolf after a popular Bill Hicks routine. Very good. I like the way you're operating. <laughs> <sighs> Fantastic. And then you've brought him along to this show, and now he's become part of a comedy show, and hopefully in the future, because I've got a camera at the back there, that might get shown somewhere else, and somebody might name their dodgy animal after this something in this show. Peter. <laughs> and so it goes on through time repeating again and again like the circle of life involving dodgy acrylic <laughs> scary toys one from carnival people it's probably a bit unlikely but you know you never know so is him having a legitimate business <laughs> what can I say <laughs> Anyway, what was I on about? Oh, yeah, that's right. I was telling you about the dangerous thing. The most da <laughs> One woman on her own. <laughs> <laughs> or were you just remembering that Bill Hicks routine? <laughs> it's very funny, that. Uh, yeah. No, the... Um, I was telling you about the most dangerous... The most dangerous thing about travelling around this country, right? And I, I love it. I'm having the best time of my life. It's amazing, right? I went to Broken Hill and... Uh, and <laughs> That's not the funny bit! <laughs> the dickhead went to Broken <laughs> No, I did. I went to Broken Hill. I was very excited, cos they've got the car from... Uh, they, that's where they did Mad Max 2. And they've got the car from Mad Max. And you can go there, and I know it's childish, but you can pretend to be Mel Gibson. It's brilliant. That basically involves staggering around the car. <laughs> pissed. <laughs> Just occasionally shouting anti-Semitic comments, you know. <laughs> I don't like Jews. <laughs> the end. Oh, he might be a bigoted twat, but he's all a bigoted twat. <laughs> the end. No, the most dangerous thing which I've discovered is the bloody emus. And I love your wildlife. Like kangaroos, one of the greatest creatures ever on the face of the planet, you know? They're magnificent kangaroos, you know. Except the fact that they don't give you any warning that they're going to jump in front of you. <laughs> they just stand there like this, look, looking at your bike, 100 miles away down a straight road, going... I don't know. what that is, coming down the road. Huh? <laughs> I think it's a motorbike. <laughs> well, he's about 50 miles away now. <laughs> and then just get closer and closer and closer. 100 metres, 50 metres, 20 metres, 10 metres, a metre. going in different directions. <laughs> their head's going that way and their legs are going that way. <laughs> oh, like, it's, it's like, it's like there's like six or seven smaller animals inside operating. <laughs> <laughs> you go, what the hell is it going to do? They're just unpredictable. I don't know who, you know, if there is a god, and there probably isn't, but, you know... <laughs> well, whoever designed the emu, I mean, just... What were they thinking? They just went, here's an idea. Let's have a creature that's essentially just a bush with a face. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong there? Let's have a bush with a face, and let's just have them living in amongst hundreds of bushes. <laughs> You're riding down the motorway like... Uh, it's like that. 150... 110, 110. <laughs> it's 110 on the motorways. <laughs> the... Uh, uh, 
And then all of a sudden, one of the bushes goes. <laughs> Six foot feather duster with suicidal tendencies. Come on! And there's no way of predicting where it's going to go. I had two of them running towards me down the road like that, and I saw them. And I thought, oh God, here we go. And you know when you're walking down a corridor and you sort of go to pass somebody like that, and they go the same way, so you go the other way, and then they go that way, and then you go that way, and you go, oh, and then you go, no, and then one. That's what emus are genetically programmed to do. It's a bloody nightmare. You write now, you think, do I go that way, do I go that way? And they're going, come on then, what's happening, what's happening? What's bloody happening? <laughs> and this one, and it was running towards me, I thought, do I slam on my brakes? Do I go past it? Do I try and go that way? Do I go this way? And it was getting closer and closer, and his mate come out from the side like that, and the two of them were in front of me, and I'm shit, and I was I thought, shit, what do I do? You know what I did? You know what my head decided was the best thing to do? I raised my leg like this. <laughs> Ready to Jackie Chan it. <laughs> in the face! What the hell was I thinking? Going at that speed, the bloody emu's coming the other way. Like I go, oh yeah, emu over there, watch and learn. <laughs> Just kung fu and emus off the road. Don't you mess with me. Standing on my seat. <laughs> Bloody nightmare. What's going to happen there? I would have just gone... It would have ripped my leg off. <laughs> and I would have continued driving down the road, just bleeding from the stump, whilst an emu with a leg in its mouth goes... What's that dickhead doing? Do you want a bit of leg? It's ridiculous, scary carry on, you know. But it's good. I like the way that they allow the farmers to use the sides of the road as their, their stock route. It's a clever idea. Here, yeah, let's get every animal we possibly can. Put them in the road. What could possibly go wrong there? Emus flying out right, left and centre, and bloody goats standing there like that. It's just, the, uh, what they should do, I reckon, is... Because uh, the, the, the police, right, they say, oh, should we have speed cameras? All they should do, stand at the side of the road with an emu, anyone's going a bit fast, have some of that! <laughs> and it would work on two levels, because you know how they're always saying we need to do more exercise. Three times a week, you need to raise your heart rate for 30 minutes. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm not going to die of a heart attack. <laughs> Problem solved. Anyway, what was I on about before I started ranting about? What? Christian lady. Christian lady. Thank you very much over there. An angry Satanist joining in. <laughs> Christian lady. There's a, there's a special offer for pagans tonight. They, no, what it is, like, and don't get me wrong, seriously, if there are people in here, like, you know, I see it, that are, you know, of faith, and, you know, you might be there going, better not take the piss out of Christians. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Come on. I mean, it's, I tell you the ones that shit me the worst, right? Bloody Jehovah's Witnesses, right? <laughs> Because you're supposed to be respectful to people who believe in God because there's some sort of rule that that's like, ooh, you can't take the piss out of them. And I think, no, it's just rude. Like, because they're religious, you're, you're supposed to not say, oh, hello, Jehovah's Witness, fuck off, right? <laughs> but I just think, switch the rules around, right? How would they like it if I came to their house, right? Be because, for example, right, I love a game of Monopoly. Monopoly, can't help myself. If there's a Monopoly board, we're playing, right? <laughs> How would they like it if I knocked on the door? Excuse me, sorry to bother you, I know you're trying to have your tea, but would you be interested in Monopoly? <laughs> I love Monopoly and I play Monopoly quite... You, get out. <laughs> get right out now. Oh, that's bloody him, isn't it? That's Randy Pan's dad. <laughs> oh, and he went through that door and was denied. <laughs> Oh, blimey, that was good. Well done. The usher just went, uh-uh. 
but I'm a blind man. <laughs> Where's your wolf? Oh, shit, I forgot. <laughs> Has he gone for a cheeky wee? Maybe. Oh. It's what? Toilet stop. Oh, toilet stop. I see. So chances are he's gone for a wee. <laughs> well, it's one of two things, isn't it? <laughs> It'd be a bit scary if I went number ones and number twos and number threes. <laughs> I can ask him when he gets back. Oh, don't you worry about that one. <laughs> I'll be asking him. <laughs> yeah. He can't help himself off to the toilets for a cheeky fiddle. <laughs> no wonder he calls him Randy Pan. <laughs> Any, but, oh, no. <laughs> no, but like I say, I love a bit of Monopoly. If I went round to their house and just went, excuse me, are you interested in playing Monopoly with me? Would you like to discuss Monopoly? Possibly you would let me into your house and the two of us could sit down, get on our knees and play Monopoly together. <laughs> you could allow the idea of Monopoly into your life. <laughs> He'd turn around and go, piss off, you're mental! <laughs> I then would leave. I wouldn't persist by going, OK, I'll just leave the rules. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'll just... I'll just leave the rules and you can read through. If there's anything in there that interests you, you know, chance or community chess, <laughs> the possibility of winning first prize in a beauty competition. <laughs> I'll pop back on Sunday and we'll have a lovely sing-song all about Monopoly. Get out, you mental! You know, it just doesn't make sense, you know, and they... Oh, they... But this woman, right? This dickhead, right, in England, right? She was a BA worker, right? British Airways, right? She didn't work for the fella from the air team. <laughs> yeah. I pity the fool! I pity the fool who works for me! No, British Airways, right? She works for British Airways. I can see you filling them in. He said, <laughs> while you were up, he asked if you were doing a wee, and I said that you were doing them at the and then you went to the thing and you were blinded, you couldn't get out. And, All right, thanks very much. <laughs> that was quick. Did you not go in the interval? The show plays on speakers outside. The what? I'm not filled in. The show plays on speakers outside. The show plays on speakers outside? We paid tickets. We paid to get in there. You paid to get in there, but it's playing outside. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, I mean, I know the thing's sold out, but that's taking the piss, isn't it? <laughs> If right now there's a lot of kids in the car, I'll give you that. I wonder what colour his beard is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm technically blind. <laughs> but there was this dickhead, right? Christian woman, right? Oh, right? Dickhead, 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 right? Seriously, if you're a Christian, you're a dickhead. <laughs> I'll defend your right to be a dickhead. I get very angry when people start trying to ban all different things. That annoy they try to ban hot cross buns because they said it was a religious thing and it shouldn't be allowed. No, it doesn't matter whether or not it's based on nonsense, it still should be allowed to exist, you know. <laughs> they went, you can't call them hot cross buns because a cross is a Christian symbol. It, they should be called spiced buns. No, they shouldn't. The only reason you've got a cross on them is because they're hot cross buns. <laughs> if he did exist, Jesus died on a cross. He didn't die on a big pile of spices. <laughs> Think it through. The Romans killed our Lord. No, it wasn't. It was Colonel Sanders. <laughs> With his ten blends of herbs and spices. They placed him on a cross. Or was it a rotisserie? <laughs> our Lord was revolved as they threw the spices at him. <laughs> Our Lord is dead. Oh, but he's finger licking good. <laughs> Who gives a shit whether they're called hot cross buns or spiced buns or you call them Jesus baps for all I'm bothered? <laughs> or Messiah muffins. That'd be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, find the face of our Lord Jesus in the top of them like that. <laughs> There's the Lord. Next muffin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the point is, right, this dickhead, this Christian dickhead, right, 
she caused all sorts of controversy, right? And she was in all the papers, right? Because she wanted to wear a... They sacked her because she wanted to wear a cross at work. And they said, you can't wear a cross. I just thought, who cares about whether she wears a cross or not? You know, I mean, I believe in Darwinism. You don't see me wearing a tiara with all monkeys on it, do you? Like, yeah. <laughs> To be honest with you, I would if they sold them. But um, <laughs> but she was there going, I have to wear a cross because I'm a Christian. And everyone was going, she's got a good point. No, she doesn't have a good point. It should be a different matter if she came out and went, I have to wear the cross because I pissed off a vampire. <laughs> People would think she was loopy. Because it's Jesus, I have to show the cross as an outward display of Christianity. Here's an outward display of Christianity. Be nice to people, love thy neighbour, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Just as an idea, you know? <laughs> Spend less time singing about shit and actually go out and be nice to people. How's that for an idea? We really love you, Jesus. You're really, really good. That's your way of showing your love, by standing in a big old dra drafty room going, We think you are brilliant. We really like your face. It's just... That's shit! How would you... If you were in love with somebody, like, you know, a human person that genuinely existed, <laughs> you wouldn't follow them round the house going, We really... Oh, God, she was as bad as there was another one. The, the, a Muslim woman, right? Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say Muslim, wrong. <laughs> it's not politically correct. Bollocks to them. They're just as retarded as Christians. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm sick of it. Like, you know, I mean, let's not be mean to Muslim people in general, you know, and they get a bit of a hard time for it. They're not all terrorists, right? Fair enough. Some of them are. You know, quite frankly, some of them are just mine. You know, but most of them, lovely people, fancy, canny, lovely, cheeky Muslims. The, yeah, the cheeky Muslims, they're the best, yeah. They do a little dance. Ah, cheeky cheeky Muslim, cheeky cheeky Muslim, we love you. Hey, who? Cheeky cheeky Muslim, cheeky cheeky Muslim, we love you. Who? Ha, cheeky cheeky Muslim, stick it in your mouth. Hey, who? Cheeky cheeky Muslim, cheeky cheeky Muslim, we you. Who? You know, um. Oh. It's a bit of a turnaround, that mind, isn't it? From going, oh, you can't talk about Muslims. To, hey, hey, oh. Jiggy jiggy Muslim, jiggy jiggy Muslim, we live. Right now in the car park, all the kids will be like, hey, ho, jiggy jiggy Muslim, do live. What a great way to end a gig that would be, wouldn't it? If just thousands of people ended up just congering through the streets of camera. Hey, ho, jiggy jiggy Muslim, jiggy jiggy Muslim, we love you. Who ha, jiggy jiggy Muslim, jiggy. That's quite a difficult one to police that, though, isn't it? You know, I mean, do you attempt to get lots of police officers and rush us from the side? Or do you just get one bloke in full riot gear <laughs> to attack the head of the conga? Here they come. Because if he bottled out, he could just go, ah, oh, shit, and leave. Oh, ha, see, see, oh. <laughs> There's this Muslim woman, right? And she's, you know, obviously they like to wear the veils and stuff, which I've never understood. It's a ridiculous uh, thing to do, you know. They, it's, I don't know if they have to wear a veil or it's as long as their face is covered, you know. They, they should be allowed to have just a, a couple of, uh, like, dry ice machines either side. <laughs> You know, or some steam jets, just some steam there. Just as soon as a man looks at their face, they just press it. <laughs> oh, look at that steam-faced Muslim over there. <laughs> Don't look at my face. The, or a waterfall, a nice waterfall, just <laughs> coming down there like that. 
bit of food colour in the top to cover the, you know, the, yeah, not with water restrictions at stage four. Mm, there'd be a lot of Muslim ladies not able to leave the house. I'd be like that. Is it raining yet? No. Mm. It'll have to be the veil again today. The, oh, the veil in this weather. Oh, dear me. The, can you get it in bikini material? Do you know what I mean? Just, no, never mind. The, um, That'd be a hell of a tan, wouldn't it? Just uh, like that. You'd look like Michael Stipe when you took your clothes off. Never mind. This, look at that. There's about four people got that. That's good, that. I like that. It's a very good R.E.M. joke, that, but I don't know. Anyway, so, this dickhead, right, she wanted to wear the veil. She was a teacher. She wanted to wear it whilst teaching the children, and they said, you can't, because it's going to interfere with your job, right? And she, there was a genuine quote from this woman, right? The biggest bit of religious nonsense I've seen in years, right? She's interviewed on the news and she went like this. I can't see how the children would be intimidated. Because <laughs> you look like a deadly assassin! <laughs> you can't turn up to work dressed like a ninja and expect people not to freak out! <laughs> it's not going to affect my work! Yes, it is! You couldn't do your job through a hole in a fence, could you? Hey, kiddies, sing along and do the actions. The wheels on the bus go round and round. R Why aren't you doing it, kiddies? Come on. The wheels on the bus... Watch my eyes. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and... It's all nonsense, and it's time it stopped. That's all I have to say on the subject. You know, the... Uh, well, it's not all I have to say on the subject. <laughs> I could rant on about it for hours, to be honest. I just don't understand why you've got... You've got, like, Muslims wearing veils. You've got Sikhs wearing turbans. You've got Jewish people wearing, like, the, the yarmulkes and all the, the skullcap things. And what is it with religious people in hats? <laughs> Do you really think God gives a shit what sort of hat you wear? Do you not think something that created everything probably has bigger things to think about than your choice of hat? It, it doesn't give a shit. He's not going to be up there on his cloud going, I am the Lord, supreme ruler of the universe. I can destroy you with my almighty powers. Well, I tell you what, I'm a stickler for millinery. <laughs> Ooh, wear the wrong hat and I'll strike you down, bitches. <laughs> he doesn't care. He's kind of a bit more open-minded, I think, you know? You know what would make me laugh? Is if it come to Judgment Day and we discovered that all the religious people were wrong. And I'll happily burn in hell. I don't give a shit, right? I just think, use your imagination. But the point is, is if we went up to heaven and we discovered no one was allowed in other than, right, the only people that God lets in, right, the only hat that God approves of is the top hat. <laughs> Wouldn't that be magnificent? Because come Judgment Day, we're all outside the pearly gates and the only ones allowed in are God, Fred Astaire and Slash from Guns N' Roses. <laughs> It'd be fantastic. And bizarrely enough, the fella from the Monopoly board. <laughs> And magicians. <laughs> and the fat controller. <laughs> and Top Cat. And that peanut with a monocle that. Um, uh, and Abraham Lincoln as well. I've not fully thought that through, to be honest. <laughs> Needs a bit of work. <laughs> I do like the idea, because what will happen with this show is the fact that, like, you might, for a while, just bits of the show will go in and you'll start think going, oh, shit, uh, I better make out my will and I better buy a top hat. <laughs> just to make sure that I do go to heaven. The, um, I'd, I'd like that. I mean, it'd be nice if there was a heaven, you know, because I think that would be... You know, it would be... I'd quite like to meet Harold Lloyd and Steve Irwin, you know. But, the yeah. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? No, just a thing, personal thing. The, oh, I'll tell you what, right? I made a terrible faux pas. I, I, oh, God. Every like, I loved Steve Irwin, right? He was my ultimate hero, right? Him and Evil Knievel, right? <laughs> 
for me, the ultimate, the ultimate entertainment, right, would be as if Steve Irwin and Evil Knievel had got together, got on the back of a crocodile and jumped a hippo. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That would have been the ultimate. I, I, you couldn't get better than that, right? But the night that he died, right, I made such a faux pas, it wasn't even funny. Well, it was funny, it was hilarious, but, <laughs> but wrong. I was chatting to him, I was going, blah, 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 blah. And somebody in the audience shouted, have you heard about Steve Irwin? And I went, no, what's Steve up to? Right? And somebody went, oh. <laughs> and I went, what? And he went, he died. <laughs> and I was genuinely blindsided, right? I went, what? And I was deeply upset. And I went, he, what, he died? And somebody right at the very back, this little voice went, Are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm stood there, and I went, and, I, and when the voice went, Are you all right? I didn't know how he died, and I feel terrible now, but it was funny. <laughs> I went, Sorry, I'm, I'm deeply upset. That's got me right there, that has. <laughs> It's a shocking state of affairs. <laughs> he was the greatest human being. I mean, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong, he was mental, you know. <laughs> he is a man who found the most dangerous creatures on the planet and just wound them up. <laughs> I remember he is the deadly great war shark. I'll punch him in the face. <laughs> the alligator with his razor sharp teeth. I'll put me plums in his mouth. <laughs> The most deadly snake alive! Oh, shut up my ass! <laughs> and yet, he was killed by a stingray. A stingray? Hello, I'm a stingray. <laughs> oh, I can't, you are, I'll get a cup of tea, I'm a stingray. And, and people in England thought that stingrays were dangerous, that they killed people all the time. They're stingrays, they're evil bastards, kill him. Oh, I'm a stingray. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of buying a new pair of shoes. <laughs> People didn't understand, they don't even wear shoes, that's how flaccid they are. What are you buying shoes for? They're a gift. <laughs> They're a gift for an elderly lady. I'm a stingray and I'm a caring person. You know... <laughs> stingray? Killed by a stingray? And, everyone, and they didn't understand that they were placid and lovely creatures. The only way I could describe it to people back home, right, was, was basically the, the equivalent in England would be walking through a forest and being killed by a falling owl. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You're doing... <laughs> I'm not quite sure how the owl falls from its perch. <laughs> Clearly some local kids have greased up a branch. Because <laughs> they're quite grippy creatures, owls, you know. Probably see the branch there and just go, oh yeah, yeah that'll do, lovely. Think, I'll have that branch there, that'll be... Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> I seem to have survived that fall there. <laughs> Drop another one. I've developed, I've developed an owl immunity. <laughs> they don't seem to be falling onto the floor either. They seem to be catching them on my head and stacking them up. <laughs> I'll do that again, but this time, listen out for the secondary noise of the owl as he hits the floor. Oh, yeah, never let it be said that my mimes are anything less than complete. <laughs> see that? I even checked to see if the owl was ready. Did you see that? I did a cheeky walk forward as he loaded up in the special owl dropping contraption. Yes. Thanks.
feel the tension in here. Can you feel? People going, bloody hell, Ross, don't even attempt it. I don't know if you can pull it off. Trust me, I'm a fully trained owl professional. Please. This is a very, very difficult stunt to pull up. Did you hear that? That's all your fault. <laughs> what were you saying, Do as in like that? Or did you want me to change the bird? <laughs> were you going, I'd prefer to see a duck fall. <laughs> I can if you want. I'm, I'm versatile. <laughs> One second. Excuse me, yes. Take the owl out of the device <laughs> and place a duck in. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean it's unorthodox? I know it is. <laughs> What do you mean you haven't got the right attachment to fit a duck? <laughs> Can you not just improvise? Or drop it by hand? <laughs> Who are you exactly I'm talking to? <laughs> and why are you hanging around above the stage with a selection of different birds? What, you just... <laughs> you just happened to have a duck there, did you? Yes. What? It's flightless. You're right, yes. Try and drop it so its bill is facing up so it doesn't get jammed... <laughs> ..in my head. Yes. OK. But why? Because some dickhead shouted it out. I mean, <laughs> what can I do? Can't just ignore the fact that he shouted duck, can I? All right, we'll load it up. Thanks. I'm not quite sure why I said that in a slightly camp voice, but... <laughs> what? No, I don't want volivons. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like, possibly? <laughs> Seeing as we're changing the bird that's fallen on my head, why don't we open it up? Is there any other...? Emu. What? An emu! <laughs> oh, good work. As I approach the, uh, the, the duck dropping zone, uh, an emu will run towards me and I'll be forced to... <laughs> good thinking there. <laughs> what? Ask Peter for the duck. Look. I don't want Peter anywhere near this scenario. Cos all I know is it'll end up with me getting whacked in the face with something... <laughs> ..that, quite frankly, I don't want anywhere near my face. As much as I, as much as I enjoy a volivon, I draw the line there. <laughs> that's the greatest... That's got to be the greatest euphemism for being gay you could ever... As much as I enjoy a volivon... <laughs> I, uh... My favourite euphemism for being gay is, uh, uh, he enjoys rollerblading. <laughs> because rollerblading is the gayest thing you can do, right? <laughs> you can have sex with a man and that is less gay than rollerblading, right? <laughs> Where else can you combine action and gayness in one perfect union. The only way to get more action and gayness into one short activity is to fire Elton John out of a cannon. <laughs> so, we're dropping a duck. I'm going to dodge an emu. The owl's going to hit me on the head. Anything else you'd like? Do it while I'm rollerblading. <laughs> Whatever turns you on, my friend. <laughs> All right, then, I shall do it whilst rollerblading. Yeah, anything else? With a burka on. With a burka on! <laughs> Ooh, it'll have to be a short one so it doesn't get caught in the rollerblade. <laughs> yep, no problem, right? I'll have a burka on, there we go. The, uh, can I have the steam-powered version? <laughs> in fact, what I'll do is I'll put the steam jets that way and then that will propel me forward. <laughs> Good thinking. Anything else? On fire! <laughs> and what? On a what? A bike helmet. So I'm wearing a burka and a bike helmet. And I'm on... And a what? Top hat. And a top hat. <laughs> right. So, let me get this straight. I'm on... Ro just wait a second! I'm on rollerblades, wearing a burka, 
with a motorcycle helmet on, with a top hat, on fire. <laughs> oh. and take the what? Take the plug. <laughs> oh, take the mug. No. It's a stupid idea. I I what? Naked. How can I be naked and wearing a burqa? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll wear the top half of a burqa and I'll be naked from the waist down. Right. What? Being chased by... Pe no. Let's leave Peter out of this. <laughs> He's going, thank you. It's a shame he didn't say that at the start of the night. I tell you what I'll do as well, right? When I get to the... Instead of just allowing the owl to hit me on the head, and I'll do a few owl tricks to make it more of a spectacular. I know it's a duck! <laughs> For fuck's sake. Right then, when the duck falls... <laughs> you fucking pedantic <laughs> bastard. Yeah, I'll do owl tricks with a duck. <laughs> yes. When I get to here, I'll do a few duck tricks. As he hits me on the head, right, I'll have him bounce off my shoulder, and then off my elbow, and then I'll Steven Seagal him <laughs> backwards, then I'll kick him over my head, which isn't easy on rollerblades, <laughs> over the top, right, and then I'll play keepsy upsy with him, like that, right, and then, wait, <laughs> I'm gonna kick him out there, right, you, my friend, Randy Pan's guardian. <laughs> I'm gonna kick him to you, right? I want you to stand up, head button back, and then I'll catch him between the knees. <laughs> okay? Yeah? Do it what? Blind. Do it blind. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what, I'll do it technically blind. <laughs> right. Can you do that for me? Yeah, and you better stand up as well, because if you don't, the duck will fly over and it'll get somebody in the eye. <laughs> and I'm not covered for public duck liability. <laughs> Do, doing what? Doing a stingray. Doing a sting. <laughs> oh, swinging a stingray. <laughs> All right then, I'll swing a stingray. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll sing Rawhide at the end. <laughs> Right, let's pretend a stingray is in a nice tank there, ready to be swung. <laughs> okay. Where's your guide dog? I can't find him. <laughs> I'm technically blind. <laughs> He's run off with the wolf. Right. Now, when I start this, you can do a bit of a drum roll on your lap, right? OK. <laughs> Excuse me one sec. Oh, not yet! <laughs> Got to get me skates on first, haven't I? <laughs> oh, but I take my pants off. <laughs> Thank you. This is good. I can't help thinking that male strippers in the area have got it easy if they only have to mime taking their gun. <laughs> <laughs> Loads of women going, oh, that Marcel Morceau, he's a hot bastard. <laughs> Sorry, that was... That was the sweat. <laughs> Bucketing out there. Oh, that's better. <laughs> I like to be comfortable under my... <laughs> Is he wearing ladies' stockings? <laughs> right then, hang on, so what do I want now? Right, you know, put me burqa on. <laughs> Touch me steam jets. A little furnace here, <laughs> tiny bit of coal. 
ready to create the steam. Uh, crash helmet. Blindfold. <laughs> oh, it's quite hard. It slipped off the top there. It's very shiny, that helmet. Right. Uh, skates. <clears throat> where I'm going now. <laughs> what? <laughs> Give us a chance! <laughs> Just put my skates on, you bastard. I can't find it. I've got my blindfold on, haven't I? <laughs> Please, Lord, deliver me a top hat. <laughs> Thanks, Lord. <laughs> right, here we go. Skates. You ready? Get the stingray ready. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Oh, the seats are rolling. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's all for me. Take care of the shopsy.